my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. My name is Jen and this is my sewing room and I am really, really glad that you stopped by to have a visit on Friday. So welcome. Friday Sews is when I talk about all the stuff I've been sewing in the previous week, in the upcoming weekend, and on into the upcoming week, and I chat endlessly about life. That's pretty much, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just get right into it, because you're probably here for the sewing anyway, so let me tell you about the sewing. I finished McCall's 7969. There are a lot of things I could tell you about this, but all I'm going to say is that it needs its own video, it will get its own video, and it's done. Thank you, God. Also, thank you, God, it's done is my Hawaii dress. I think we need to have a little, let's see, hula in celebration. Yes, do a hula with me. Okay, here is the total extent of my Hawaii knowledge. I saw Lilo and Stitch. I've seen Moana a couple of times. I've been to Hawaii, I think, four times, and I went to a luau once. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and I made a moo moo. That's it. Um, I ordered this fabric from Hawaii Fabric Mart because when I saw this pattern, which is McCall's 7948, on which this dress is loosely based, um, this was my starting point. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, it would be fun to play with one print done in different colorways. So that's what I did. So this is just a poly cotton. Hawaii Fabric Mart is online. You can order fabric from them. And they're also on Instagram and they're really entertaining to see on Instagram because their whole store, it's, it's such great pictures. So the differences, first of all, this is very loose fitting and you can pull it over your head. Whereas I didn't like that because those kinds of dresses tend to look really like a tent on me. They're, they're, I need some I, definition through here. So this has darts in the front and darts in the back has a side zipper so I could could get it on over my head. Um, the tiers on the skirt, well for one thing I have three tiers here and then a little ruffle at the bottom and this one only has two. And I didn't like how these weren't gathered enough for me so I just cut rectangles and did the math and ended up having to order more fabric a couple of times which is partly why this took so long to finish. It's done, it's been a long time coming and I'm happy about that so that's the Hawaii dress. Yay! Aloha! I also finished this little beauty. I'm so happy about this. This is Vogue 8856. And I didn't know if this was going to be a huge disaster or if it was going to work. I love this pattern. I love it. It's, I made view A which has a cowl neck and a little dancy skirt. <laughs> this is the thing about these two things. They're very dancy. My daughter used to say, I, Mom, I want a dress that can dance. That dress can dance. Yeah, that's important. Uh, so anyway, it does. This is a knit that I had gotten a while ago at Joann's, made something from it, and then liked the fabric, but didn't like the pattern that I used. Um, the garment didn't end up fitting me very well. And, so I really liked the knit and I found it again last year on clearance at Joann's. And so I thought, ooh, it has four way stretch. So this way and this way, and it's very soft, but I don't know if you'd call this rayon jersey. I don't know if you'd call it something else. I don't know. I don't have a clue, but it feels nice and it's knit. Anyway, so the thing that that's perfect about this fabric and this pattern is that you have a cowl neckline, which that I have trouble with those. And I don't think it would have draped nearly as nicely if this hadn't been this fabric. And there's a lot of gathering that's going on here and it's very swishy. And so it's gathered up here at the shoulder. And then it's also, there's a skirt in the back where it's gathered. So it needed to have a lot of movement and um, the fabric did. So it worked, it worked. And I have a secret weapon now when it comes to knits. And I say this because if you are a beginning sewer and you pick up a piece of fabric like this and you think it's so soft, it's so stretchy, it's gonna look so great. And then you go to sew it and it slides and slips all over the place. And when you go to cut it out, you have no way of pinning it down. It's like <laughs> everything wants to distort. Well, once you do get it cut out, here is something you should use. And this, I got it Waywack and 
they are a notions company and they have great prices when i saw that they had this i was thrilled because they used to get this stuff uh, in a package at Joann's and I forget who made it, but they don't make it anymore, which was really just, I don't know. I, I, you can take interfacing and cut it into strips if you want, or you can order this, which is a roll of fusible interfacing cut into a one inch strip. And I ended up cutting it into smaller strips and I fused it to all of the seam lines that I knew were going to need it. I didn't do it on the places where I gathered it, I didn't do it on the hem, and I didn't do it on the neckline. But everywhere else, I fused this stuff right inside the seam line, and what a difference! Everything didn't distort out of shape, it was fantastic! So this is my new secret weapon when it comes to dealing with slippery knits. Um, I was going to um, follow the directions which tell you to fold it under and do a narrow hem. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that. Because this is a four-way stretch, I just cut a straight strip uh, for each armhole and then just did a binding. And then I was going to turn it under and stitch it. And I thought, why would I want to go to the trouble to do that? Because I'll just probably distort it out of shape. It'll look weird. I left it. I, I didn't even stitch these on my regular machine. I just searched that on and yes. I didn't hem this. I looked at this hem and I thought, you know what? This stuff doesn't even roll. It's just wonderful. At, over time, as I wash it, it'll probably start to show that I haven't hemmed it and I'll hem it then. <laughs> okay. Win. Huge win. Me and Vogue. We are BFFs now. Yes, we are. I love you, Vogue. I, well, I love this pattern. Also, with regard to this pattern, if you did it in a chalet, like a soft rayon chalet, or something else soft like that, even a crepe um, or a polyester woven of some type. Um, if you put a zipper up the back, because this does have a center back seam, and if you accounted for some of the ease in the side seams, I think that this would be gorgeous as a dress. I think it would be so pretty. I may try that. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, my tenuous relationship with Vogue it goes hot and cold, so Right now it's hot, so that's good. <laughs> so last night, um, well anyway, that was last week. So uh, on into this weekend and next week. Um, I have this knit that I got at Hobby Lobby. You've probably seen it. All kinds of people all over Instagram and other places have made things from it. Um, I have this Vogue pattern. I wanted a t-shirt dress because when I go into my closet in the mornings, I look for the most shapeless thing that I can just throw over my head and be comfortable in while I drink my coffee and watch YouTube and answer comments and look at Instagram and answer my email and you know, all the things you do. And I saw this and I thought, I don't know, seems like somebody else had made this and they said it was like a big tent. And I thought, well, I have I didn't have enough of that fabric, but I shortened the sleeves and shortened the hem a little bit and that worked. So um, this is Vogue 8508 from, this does not, yes it does, 2008 is the date on that. And so I'm going to make this version, which is view A, and we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it flowy it is, how loose it is, and just how it works. So we'll see if Vogue and I continue to get along. Earlier this past week, I was at the library with my husband because he had to go vote. I already had voted by mail, so I didn't have to go vote. By the way, I went online, went online, I checked, they did receive my ballot, and they did count it, which is important. If you're going to vote by mail with all the you know, fraud going on with, you know, ballots being dumped and stolen and all manner of things. Just check and make sure. And I did, and it was. We have to go to the public library in order to do that. And so I went over to in the library, which I could live in a library. I about did when I was in school, but uh, he was voting. I went over to where the art books are, and I found this one, which is um, At Home, Sarah Style by Sarah Richardson. Never heard of her, but she's Canadian, and apparently she has a bunch of TV shows on HGTV. Whether she's in them or produces them, I don't know, but it's a beautiful book. So I was taking pictures of the book when it occurred to me that I could probably just check the book out and take it home. God, what a concept. So I did, and bonus, it has pictures in the back of food. It has recipes. 
Okay, here's what I love about a book like this. Anytime I go onto Pinterest or Instagram or Google even, and I put in search terms for what I'm looking for, they give me a whole lot of what I'm not looking for and a whole lot of ads. And it doesn't matter what I use, what I say, I can never get those search terms written um, clearly enough for the search engine to understand what I want. So that's why a book like this or a magazine is always a good thing. And so I got tons of ideas um, from this, which was good because in my house, I don't deal with window treatments. I, you know, I'm a decorator. I, I have a design degree, so okay. Uh, you'd think I'd know what I was doing, but not always. I'm one of those, uh, tear down that wall and put in a new kitchen and do, redo the layout of that, lay a new floor. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm not one of those, oh, arrange these little knickknacks on your shelf and it'll be pretty. I, yeah, I don't know. Well, window treatments are the bane of my design existence because I hate them. I can never pick the right one and I'm never happy and hanging curtain rods is such a pain in the neck. So I didn't know what to do with my windows when I first moved into this house a couple of years ago. And I tend to leave windows alone. I just leave them bare. And in the living room and the kitchen, I decided I needed to throw something up there. Um, so I did put up a curtain rod. I had these little ring clip things from Ikea and I got some, I got like three yards of muslin from Walmart and I just clipped it up and draped it artfully. <laughs> okay. And now when people walk into my house, they go, I love that window treatment. That's so pretty. Well, my walls are this beigey kind of color, kind of an Adobe color and the muslin mixes right in, but gives it a finished look. So well, like, okay. So I started thinking about the other windows that I need to finish, it's mainly this one. And I couldn't find the muslin at Walmart, so I ordered some online and it came. So now I, I also got some curtain rods, so I'm going to address that problem. Take care of that this week, hopefully. And when I was putting some patterns away, I found this one, McCall's um, 2723. It is Sewing Room Essentials. I had no idea I had this. And so when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, I could take this room and unify it a little bit in terms of color. And the trouble with doing that in here is that I have bookshelves full of books. Books and more books. And, you know, book covers provide a cacophony of color. So going and staying neutral is probably the best idea, especially since I would really rather not paint in here. I mean, I can do it and I do like to paint, but I don't want to in here. <laughs> I just don't want to paint right now. But I thought I, I could make covers for my machines. This just has all these little things on it. Uh, machine covers, um, ironing board cover, sleeve press cover. You can make a pressing ham and a sleeve roll an apron, an organizer, a box, a window treatment, and a basket. And that's a whole slew of things. I don't even have any idea where I got this, but I, when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, I could do that. I could, you know, find some benign color, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe even use my muslin and just um, make covers so that it would unify the space a little bit. Just kind of give it a little more finished look, you know? So that's in my brain rolling around and um, got a comment this morning where I think it was Margie Cook said, hey, you should use that coral lining stuff that you got and make that Laura Ashley maxi that you've talked about. And I thought, oh, that's such a good idea. So I may cut this out this week. McCall 7972 is the pattern and I would want to make the maxi with the ruffles. Uh, okay, what else? I guess that's it. Um, I have to tell you, I love you guys. I love you. I am so, I, I spent part of the morning this morning, um, answering comments and it's so much fun. I love chatting with you. I love hearing about everything. I just, I feel like I have all these friends now that I can just, I have all these things in common with and you, you want to talk to me, which is fabulous. I have some shout outs. 
I want to shout out my FAF buddies, the ones with lots of machines or have machines that they love, who all responded when I talked about the 2140. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, I took it to, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, my good friend who had the Bobcat incident, um, my uh, Laura Ashley Pattern Fairy. You people know who you are. All of you know who you are. My friend, um, mon ami in Canada, uh, my California friend who is safe from all the fires, thank God, my Alaska buddy who loves a fire and has incredible thrift stores, all my friends who quilt, all of you who quilt, all of my shy friends that are now starting to come out of the woodwork and say, I love your vlogs. Oh, do you know what that means to me? I wouldn't even do this if you didn't tell me things like that. I just, oh, I wish I could, that uh, just warms my heart. <laughs> there are no words. Uh, my friend from Texas and the button genius, you know who you are. And my Maleficent friend in Southern California and my beautiful Aussie friend who has a garden in her yard to die for. I mean, this. This thing should be like a public space that people can go in and enjoy and be told, stay off the grass. <laughs> it's gorgeous. And she makes gorgeous stuff too. And um, my UK friend with the conservatory. All of you know who you are and you know how dear you are to my heart. I just, I love you. I love you all. I love you. Um, okay, what was I gonna tell you? Oh, the FAF 2140. It has been taken to the guy, Eric, my guy, uh, to be fixed and I have not heard from him. He hasn't called me yet, so uh, I hope it's not bad news, but I think it was Margie who told me about a guy. No, no, it wasn't Margie, it was uh, Mary in Minneapolis told me, I think it was her, that told me about a guy in uh, Pennsylvania who's German and only works on German made fafts, so maybe that'll I don't know. I'll check that out. We'll see. Okay, so I've yammered on long enough. Let me finish by saying, if there's anything going on in your life that you need for me to pray about, let me know. I'm a person of faith. I come from a place of faith and that's what I do. I pray for people. A lot of people will say I'm sending out positive thoughts and that's fine. What I do is pray. So if you need for um, somebody to pray for you for something, let me know. And I will. Okay. That's it for now for me. I think that's plenty for uh, one Friday Sews. And so uh, have a great weekend. Don't forget how much I love you and appreciate you. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.